beard. This thing is good, but it's super touchy. That's what she said. Oh. That is also what she said. Yeah, see, it did that buzzing thing again. That's why I thought it was Rex's thing, but then I touched mine because of that noise. Am Wait. I the buzz? I don't know. Bass talk. Yep. Oh. I don't hear a buzz. I was literally at one point just went and then stopped. Maybe there's a bumblebee in your house. No, oh, I hope not. I really, really hope not. Because that would not be fun. Um, I saw our intro, our old YouTube intro for the first time in years yesterday. The cinematic one? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so nice. So sexy. Yeah. Yes, it was. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast. I'm your host, G, and with me is Vass and Anthony. What's up? Yo, yo, yo. Fresh off the block. Wow. Not one much. More, <laughs> one more hood this time. Oh, you're actually hood this time? Okay. Oh, just for the uh, intro. I can't. Yikes. I can't. I'm too white. He's to like that. Uh, Malibu's most wanted. Oh, yeah. Jamie Kennedy. Wow. Yeah, exactly. That's not a good thing to be. I don't get that reference. Oh, um, I don't think it's a reference that you necessarily need to have, like know in your life. It's just mm-hmm. if you know it, you know it, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. But you almost... should watch it nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what it is. Like, is it a Mal- it's one Mal- of those reality Mal- shows? No. <laughs> sure, no, kind of, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess you could say maybe it is like a reality show if you're really wanting to dive into. See, like seriously seriously white guys pretending to be black yeah yeah that's the so best it's right up his alley then it sounds like <laughs> 2000 oh, yeah. that was like the humor in 2003 though with the white guys like in uh waiting there was that three. one those white guys yeah in scary movie three nick i found hilarious D-O? nick and t-dog <laughs> <laughs> what did i tell you it's the fucking t-dog yo oh, oh man I, I i watched them back to back and still waiting is so terrible mm-hmm yeah, it it had like very few like funny parts, but other than that, it wasn't overall it wasn't very good. Like the first <laughs> watch was humorous, but I was like, I tried watching it with my dad the second time, and I was like, this this isn't that good. <laughs> you really oversold it, didn't yeah, you? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just like, uh, it seemed like the second one they just keep, just tried to do the same thing, but it just wasn't working at all. Wait, there's a oh, second. Sure. There's a sequel to Waiting. Yeah. That's what I was saying. It's still oh. Waiting is the second one. Is it the same cast and stuff? Uh, almost some. Oh. Yeah. Not Ryan Reynolds. Uh, oh, so it's one of them is the guy who can't well, pee. Yeah, the yeah. guy who can't pee ends up being a stud. And then who else? And there's some new ones. Like to replace Ryan Reynolds' character, they actually replaced it with a guy named Agnew. Which is kind of funny because that guy plays, um, I think his name's Nick in, what the fuck's it called? In Shameless. And he's so good. And he's huge and jacked. So from still waiting to that show, I don't know what happened, but the dude got like huge, like built. He looks like, um, I don't know, a linebacker. Yeah, I'm looking at this cast and it. Probably, I'm going to skip on this one. I don't think I'm going to watch it. Yeah, it's whatever. I did finally see uh, Dodgeball, though. Oh, man. That was finally? actually really funny. Yeah, because like, I, I just, I don't know. I never saw it. And then oh, I was man. on Plex. And I'm like, you know what? Because I just saw Step Brothers again. And I'm like, Dodgeball mm-hmm. is one of those that's always like talked about with Step Brothers. So I may as well check that out. Mm-hmm. And it was actually really fucking funny. For some oh, reason, yeah. I thought it was a Will Ferrell movie. But it wasn't. And I was like, oh, it wasn't a big deal or anything. I just always assumed it was a Will Ferrell did movie. Did you mistake Vince Vaughn for Will Ferrell? Is that what you did? <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, just as I was growing up, I just all because like Step Brothers was always like talked about with mm-hmm. Dodgeball, so I just assumed it was like they were both Will Ferrell movies <laughs> because they were talked about the same. Yeah, like just the like, kind of same oh. set, like thought structure. People say, "Oh, I love, like they'd quote Dodgeball, they'd quote Step Brothers like back to back." So I'm like, "Oh, it's I don't know, it's just my train of th- thought." Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I, I've always put Step Brothers and the other guys kind of together because they are both Will mm-hmm. Ferrell ones. Um, mm, Dodgeball's yeah. kind of, I don't know what I would compare Dodgeball to. Like any other kind of, I guess, kind of sports comedy, but most of them are actually around like baseball or basketball or football. That one's it's, like Dodgeball. Get, 
if you want to get that specific, I guess you could say. I'm just thinking that type of like there's a there's a style of those comedy movies that kind of all came out and they were like Step Brothers and that Dodgeball kind of falls into that. Waiting is basically part of that too. So I mm-hmm. mean, I think anything and they all kind of followed somewhat of a similar style, I guess you could say, regardless of like if it's a sports comedy or whatever. Like Blades of Glory kind of falls in there too. Yeah, that one could be in there, and that's also yeah. Will Ferrell one. Yeah, the that one commentator, I fucking loved. I, I I don't know why I forget his name. Oh, Who's Jason in the rest Bateman, of the man. <laughs> yeah, that's oh Jason my Bateman. god from like, Ozark. <laughs> it's just, it was like it just reminded sometimes of our podcast where like one of us is. I'm not blaming with Seeley because I've had this too, but one of us is uninterested, and someone <laughs> says something. He's like, like oh yeah, like they have to make it or win it in this one. Yep, this is an important day, and the other commentator <laughs> just stares at him because he's giving nothing off. It looks like Peter is putting on a blindfold. Yeah, he will not be able to see very well, Cotton. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's one of the best. He was, you know, it took me so long to realize that that was Jason Bateman. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. I love Arrested Development. I want to watch Ozark really soon, but I love, uh, like, he's... that comedy. That was easily, like, one of my favorite, like, just line of jokes in that movie just because of how, like, stupid it was. But it, yeah. it still worked so well because it was so fucking funny. It's, it's so sh- good. Oh, yeah. And it just shows how Bateman is like, he's so versatile that way. And like, he goes to do something extremely serious like Ozark. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he's got that under his belt, he did the uh, Horrible Bosses was pretty good. I like that. Yeah, he's good. Um, what else did he do? Arrested he did Development. Arrested he's Development. Arrested Development. Course. He did the, the Will Smith movie, the superhero one. What was it called? Hancock. Um, oh, yeah. Hancock. Uh, yeah. Hancock. Yeah. yeah. He did Game Identity Night, which I haven't uh, seen. I haven't seen Game Night either, but I heard it's good. That's on uh, Netflix. That one, it, yeah, it is. Yeah, he did Zootopia. He did The Gift, which was actually very good. If mm-hmm. you haven't ch- had a chance to see The Gift, oh man, watch it. It's wild. Like, it's mm-hmm. actually crazy. Um, what is it? Dodgeball, we said he was already in. Extract, I saw recently. That one was pretty decent. Oh, yeah. Uh, that one kind of and, falls under the radar. I wasn't yeah. sure about that one 100%, but. He was in The Breakup, which I thought was a pretty good one. And that also fell into that same kind of like uh, Vince Vaughn era of Dodgeball, The Breakup. He had Wedding Crashers. Uh, he mm-hmm. It's kind of like a, a three-movie resurgence in a way. Um, oh, and his spot in like Smoking Aces was actually hilarious. It was super small. But it oh, was, yeah, it was, right. It was, it, was, it was pretty big, right? And then mm-hmm. he was in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. But why am I forgetting which character he was? And I feel stupid for forgetting it, but apparently he was in it. Another one I found really funny, Office Christmas Party. Like oh, it was not a very good, good movie, but like it's just I like that Harold and Kumark style humor that is just so fucking good. Hmm. Yeah, that was good like in the sense of like it's just you just watch it and it's so wild and then you mm-hmm. can just enjoy watching it. Man, I haven't seen that one for a while either. Smoking Aces was another one. I think we've talked about it a couple times on this show. Mm-hmm. But it was like one of those ones where it was doing so good in the beginning and then all of a sudden like in the middle i think there was i think they could have doubled down and done some things better but it ended up falling off for me still good though i i still like watching it um Solid. yeah so um i don't know as you can see we've started this thing off and this is how the program's going to be from now on i think the news is like super fucking slim and it's like pulling teeth trying to find something legitimately good like this whole week i was looking for shit so I've been keeping this thing on the list for so long and I'm going to bring it up and I want us to discuss it to like however long we want to actually Mm. discuss this fucking thing. So because you guys are huge fans of How I Met Your Mother and I liked How I Met Your Mother, every time I watch it, I like it a little bit less. But Mm. my question was from the beginning because the last time I watched it recently because you guys were talking about it a lot, Mm -hmm. is Barney Stinson a redeemable character that's my that's what i want to pose to you because he's yes he's super funny at times really quirky um they they really pushed the show to go to be about him like towards Mm -hmm. the end there and because they saw that people really gravitated towards him but as a character they have these moments where we're supposed to feel bad for him and does that make him redeemable? And so I want you guys to let me know yes or no and maybe cite some stuff that would make him redeemable. Well, I say and yes. Wants to go. Okay, Anthony, go for it. Uh, in certain instances, like 
for me, I understand why some people uh, dislike him. One of my friends dislikes him. Like, he's the only one I've ever heard that actually dislikes him. In my mind, I love Barney Stinson. Him and Ted are my favorite characters on the show, just because of how they're kind of polar opposites. But in my mind, Barney is, you know, he's a player, all that crap and whatever. But later on, at like season five or six, when we find out about his past with his father, it makes him more relatable. And like, you actually get to see the full extent as to why he's lashing out or, yeah, lashing out and doing the things he does. And throughout the season, when he dates Nora, then Quinn, and then finally marries Robin, I know it didn't end well. But I don't really put the blame on him because even when they did get divorced, it wasn't because of Barney's actions that they got divorced. It was just because it ran its course and they both came to a mutual agreement. So the character that nobody expected to get married, Barney Stinson, eventually did. And he didn't cheat on Robin. He didn't do anything bad to Robin. It just fizzled out. So near the end, I know, like I personally, I, like I disliked the ending as to what they did because they spent the whole season on their wedding and then ended it you know in two minutes uh but i don't really think that's a reflection on him i think he's a relatable character uh i don't have you know father issues but even i get really emotional when he says you know if you're gonna be some lame suburban dad why can you have been that for me uh one of my favorite scenes in the show is when he does the robin and does the whole proposal overall i just think he's a very redeemable character he has messed up a lot especially with quinn who i personally like better than robin for him but <laughs> He has messed up a lot, but I think that's kind of, you know, realistic as the show tries to portray realism. Everybody's going to mess up. You know, Ted, everybody on the show messes up in ways. So I think he is redeemable. And that is it for now. Okay. Okay. Vass? Uh, I'm kind of torn. I agree with a lot of points that Anthony brought to light in the sense that, you know, he essentially he wasn't, he cheated once. So he wasn't like always cheated and had regular girlfriends and whatever it was whenever he truly fell for someone he was with that person uh so that part is redeemable. however the unredeemable side of him is the womanizer side and he tried to justify it in the finale um by saying like oh this is just me now like if i can if it couldn't happen with this one person this is who i'm gonna be for the rest of my life so um I'll play the fence on and the political side, I guess you could say, where he's yes, redeemable in some aspects and some not. Again, for the womanizing and like the lying and all that kind of stuff. But overall, when he was fully into a relationship, he was faithful and he was always there kind of thing. So I, yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I know it's not a shitty answer, but. <laughs> now, well, G. my thing is like, we know, we know that. So I'm, I'm going to say no only be, and, and I'm trying, the hard part for me is trying to disassociate with what was happening in the show and what they were doing behind the scenes. So behind the scenes, it was, let's push the show so it can focus on Barney because clearly he's the one everybody seems to like. He's the funniest one. He's the one we can get them like more screen time for, um, all of that. You kind of like Jack Sparrow in the first pirates. Everybody loved Jack Sparrow. But what people didn't like is when they made him the focus in the other ones because it was too much. For me, I don't think he's a totally redeemable character because what they did in the show with him was he had these grand moments of romance, let's say, that ended up being undercut by these moments of just like, like literally right away of, oh, so you did this whole thing, this whole proposal for, for Quinn, let's say, and then an episode later, just to speed up the plot, you guys, you know, get divorced or you guys separate. And then he did the th- like the whole thing with Nora, let's say a whole situation where he didn't even sleep with her for, I don't know, I think it was like four or five dates and he was mm-hmm. wanting to go to booty town. And then, then they started to really push the him and Robin deal, which I thought for me was like the worst part of the show. I didn't care that they were on the show. By the way, if you hear clipping, Anthony, your microphone is spiking at certain points. I don't know what you're doing with it. I'm uh, drinking water, so I unmute my mic. So I'm, I oh. mute my mic so you don't hear the squirt, but I can just oh. move my mic. Yeah, man. Don't worry. We're fine with it. What is that oh, now? Oh, my goodness. That's the bottle. This is, I'm scared. This is, I just won't drink mean, water. Why is, it, why is it giving you feedback? I don't get it. Because it's just the water bottle. Like You know my Gatorade bottle? It's just like how it's designed. You just hear the... <laughs> 
No, I know, but all of a sudden it just had all this feedback. That's so weird. I don't know. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> that's so weird. Um, anyways, and so I I don't think he is because they just they just wanted to make him one. They forced redemption on this character. And I mean, there is the reality that maybe he wasn't as bad as Ted was saying because mm-hmm. Ted was maybe like upset during his telling of the story, like making it seem like Barney was more womanizing than he actually was. But it just felt like, especially the last couple seasons, it's like big romantic gesture and then he throws it away for Robin, let's say. Another big romantic gesture and then Robin's upset and he does something. And it just, I don't know. And then all of a sudden an entire season, which that doesn't matter with the redemption of his character, but it's just like they really pushed this thing for him and then they took it away, which was the reason why I hated the last season, except for like the last three or four episodes. Mm-hmm. But then you take into account the the um, the draft or whatever, the March Madness draft. Yeah. Do you know what yep. I mean? Like yep. that episode alone pretty much tells you like he's he's like he's put these women in in so much harm like leaving them out in the woods uh the one got the bends like all of this stuff in in the search for uh sex it's like and i'm no sjw so that part doesn't really matter but it's just like i don't know if he's actually a redeemable character like they wanted him to be it's like when um what's his face the director of uh, Gladiator. Why am I blanking on his name now? I do not know. I'll find it right now. I can't remember either. I'll find it. Ridley Scott. Jesus. So, yeah, easy. There you go. so Ridley Scott had said on record that he wanted Commodus to be a character that you felt bad for. Nobody mm-hmm. feels bad for Commodus ever. Is Commodus will keep Nobody Phoenix. ever does. Yeah. Okay. Like he, there's nothing in there that you actually feel bad for. Even when he's giving his speech in the beginning, of where um he's like you know i i had none of the virtues but i have other virtues i could have i could be really great but you never looked at me that way all of that stuff so in this one it's like okay the the show is trying to give us an idea of barney stinson that's redeemable and yet i didn't really buy it they were it was nice in the moment but overall it's like i don't know man <laughs> you guys gave us like way more seasons of him being just the funny sidekick womanizer of the show. So that's why I would say, no, he's not a redeemable character overall, even mm-hmm. though he had daddy issues and, you know, all of that stuff. Those are good points. Like, mm-hmm. I, it's not a debate, so I'm not going to rebuttal. Like, I agree with lots of your points. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Even after hearing those points, though, like, I still think just the way his character was and just how he was flawed and you got to realize why and all that. It still makes him a redeemable character in my eyes. But I just really like Barney, yeah. so it's kind of like I'm biased. It's like the Snyder Cut for me. It doesn't matter what the <laughs> fuck you say about it. I'm going to root for it. But G brought up a good point. He kind of disassociated. He he basically said, like, if you knew this person in the real world, mm. would you actually consider him a redeemable and admirable person in the sense of, like, you've seen him go through these motions, and it's like... He, do you really care about this person or what's going on? Hmm. So like, that's, mm-hmm. that's a good point. How you said, you know, bring him out of the realm of how I met your mother. And let's say if this was someone you knew or knew about, it's like, ah, oh, guy's a scumbag. Like what the heck? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So in that sense, yes, he's not redeemable as a real person. And like, if you, you know, if this was the real world and I like the, how I met your mother world was kind of the real world. And you knew this person personally. Yeah, not very redeemable overall. Um, I'm sure we know a few people like that, that if we've come across, you know, either acquaintances or what have you and stuff like that, that emulates some aspect, not to that extent, because that's very extreme. And yeah, I'd like to think uh, women are actually they're very much smarter than what is portrayed, obviously, in the show. So. Oh God! Especially yeah. when he did the the yeah. old man Barney thing. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? That's the, that would never work on anybody. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like, it it doesn't even matter. Nobody yeah. would ever fall for that. So although, on those, on those points, yeah, it's definitely not. <laughs> although it was super creative, like again, when then you look at the actual show, like some of the stuff was really creative. Like the playbook episode was really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, the scuba diver. Let's say. Yep. Um, 
you know, the Robin one I thought was good too, but I also thought that was very quick. And maybe that was just like the way that the show was. Like they weren't sure how to handle, like they wanted to show Barney, but they kept reminding themselves that, oh wait, this story is about Ted. Mm -hmm. Because for the longest time, I would, if I remember, it was in like season seven, I think when Barney and Robin were actually dating a lot. Like Mm -hmm. we're actually dating, dating. Was it six or seven? Like Like the first time or the second time? Seven was Dawn. Seven was Dawn. I think seven was Dawn. Eight, so the first is when the proposal oh or was seven nick oh maybe seven was nick because eight was the proposal wait and wasn't nine was the wedding no because yeah. robin before dating barney then she dates uh kumar that was in seven as well so yeah. i think she had the season like seven eight, they start, like they started with before the going proposal. to therapy or they didn't right. date again no 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 the they dated uh, like they started like in season five, five so maybe it was season five because because the first episode of season five was the not good enough episode where ted decided to be a, an instructor and they gave yeah. him the whip and then they were they weren't having the talk and then by the end of it um barney and robin were walking to go for brunch mm-hmm. yeah. and then L- L- lily was like no ted they don't know that they weren't lying or whatever it was and then yeah. it ended with that so Maybe that was the one because then they brought in like the robot that was supposed to be a stormtrooper, and then they brought in other people to like break them up. Yeah, that was the original ending for their first yeah. run. Yeah, that run was actually not bad. Like I didn't mind that. I just mm-hmm. wish it just was it didn't get brought up because like then I look at the show, and I know this might end up being like us, like me bitching about it, but it's like how awkward would it be in real life? A to have a friend like Barney. Like how do you handle a friend like Barney in real life? And even though he got Marshall and Lily back together, that was a big one, okay? And he's, like, you know, spent all sorts of money for stuff, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but then if you were in a f- circle of friends and two of you, and, like, 50 per- and like the one girl slept with 50% of them and both of those guys are still in love with that girl, I don't think in real life anybody would still remain friends. Well, coming from a high school, like, former high school student... Uh, it's not that unlikely like not in my case but me and my friends have talked about like why is that group of people still friends two of them are in love with the same girl that's in that friend group like it's that's genuinely not that it's not that unlikely not that it's happened to my friend group because i don't have any females in my main friend group but it has happened lots in high school that i've seen yeah i mean i, I do believe it has happened but then again they sure. are like 28 in the show so it's kind of different yeah that's age. weird mm-hmm. yeah i don't know if i'd be able to to do that but anyways that was the one topic i had the whole time and i kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it oh another thing we forgot to mention oh uh, i forgot to mention arturo is just fine yep i've been emailing him back and forth he's good uh he was just super busy he's taking a break from the socials which i think i'm gonna have to take a page of, uh, from his book because every time i look on the socials i'm just like just super down and i don't like being down um, but he's good, and so that's sweet. Brooklyn Nine Nine premieres on Canadian Netflix this weekend. Mm-hmm. Actually, as nine of this nine. recording, a nine nine, and then Extraction comes out today too. Oh yes, Casual like are doing a movie. Yeah, night. I'm I'm very excited about that. Even more so because I saw a clip of him hand to hand knife fighting with a dude, mm. and it looked real good like they were showing the behind the scenes of his training yeah and so i was like oh this is awesome and i didn't know this at the time when we first talked about extraction uh on stupid sexy thor but um a stunt person directed this so the russo brothers produced it and a stunt man directed it and i'm gonna bring up the, so it's pretty much like john wick yeah that's where where like stunt men gave us john wick so um where is it extraction 20 i was gonna say that probably doesn't happen very often i imagine they don't get an opportunity to be the main no. uh i guess the main set like the producers behind it and the ones who think of everything i guess you could say yeah well, well get this so this guy this this stunt man is sam hargrave he's done um the marvel movies some of them, I think he did Captain America Winter Soldier, which is mm-hmm. huge. 
and possibly Endgame. He did Extraction. He did Atomic Blonde, which if you haven't seen, is is pretty good. Like it's it's kind of a confusing story, but it's still pretty That's good. Charlize, in Charlize that one? Theron, she's so good. So. I don't know. I think that's pretty sweet. Uh, his work on Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War, and Captain America. Those nice. were some of the credits. Yeah. And uh, Captain America Civil War. Sorry. Yeah. And um, no, that's super awesome. And I, if more stunt people do it, then that's great because they actually know how to shoot stunts. I yeah. mean, who would have thunk? I also um, have something. Oh. Go for it. Uh, we have an updated MCU lineup. Uh, Black Ooh. Widow, November sixth, twenty twenty. Eternals, February twelfth, twenty twenty one. Shang Chi, Shang Chai, whatever you want to say, is May seventh of twenty one. And then Spider Man, Shang. Okay, excuse my French. Yeah. Spider Man three is November, or what is it? Am I reading these dates right? I assume Maybe. so. I, essentially, <laughs> they pushed everything to yeah. the the next slot. Uh, and they, the oh. very last one probably got a brand new date, I'd imagine. So Spider-Man 3 replaced Doctor Strange, and I did. I was reading the dates right. Oh, okay. uh, November 5th, 21. Thor Love and Thunder mm-hmm. is February 11th, 22. And the rest of these are 2022, so I'm just going to say the dates. Doctor Strange 2 is March 25th. Black Panther 2 is May 6th. And Captain Marvel 2 is July 8th. Yeah, you really didn't have to say that last one. Yeah. Um, as of two days <laughs> from now... Uh, and it'll be one year since the Endgame release. Now that you mentioned some of those movies, Whoa. yeah, and one year since Captain Marvel, the greatest cinematic piece of all time, other than Batman vs Superman. You mean <laughs> piece of shit of all time? Yes, Ooh. yes. I stand my piece ground on BVS. Piece, <laughs> piece of shit. I would actually watch BVS on repeat for a week instead yeah. of watching Captain Marvel once. I like watched saying you'd rather watch Shawshank Redemption than Scary Movie 2. It's like of course who wouldn't. Um yeah, no. I watched Captain America when um The Winter Soldier yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um and I got physically ill when Nick Fury opened up his eye patch and he says you got to keep both eyes open. <laughs> I was fucking livid. I actually stormed out of the room. So it's like what's wrong? I'm like you know what? I don't even. I said Captain Marvel. You just Marvel, couldn't even at that, that moment, wrong. could you? I I couldn't even. I was like, "You fucker! You ruined it. You ruined that moment. Such an amazing to moment." To uh, Samuel Jackson saying, "How dare you?" So fucking stupid. So dumb. See, and I was doing halfway decent of not swearing into this, and you had to invoke that name. Thanks a lot, Anthony. You're welcome. I have one more thing I want to add. I didn't want to cut off Vast, though, because it was, like, still into the chat. But you were talking about, like, if you took Barney Stinson and brought him into the real life, how you wouldn't Mm -hmm. like him. And I've always thought that about Gina from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, how she was a real-life character. Like, she does the most annoying things. Just the absolutely stupidest things. But everybody on the show loves her. And it's like, (laughs) no, she is so annoying. Oh, yeah. See, they doubled down on her in some aspects, too. So she's almost like the Barney Stinson of that show in some aspects. How dare you? Really? Uh, How well, dare you? Look, look at it as a character that was... Brooklyn Nine-Nine is a little bit more difficult, I think, because everyone is kind of a main-ish character. Mm-hmm. But, I yep. mean, so How Many Your Mother is the same thing, but they're trying to focus more on Ted. Yep. However, you have this side character, like they're trying to focus on Jake Peralta, but a side character like Gina kind of uh, eclipses him at moments and takes over with their 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 style and especially in the in the latest season when she left and and showed that different side of her where she's all pretentious and all that shit mm-hmm. so that kind of you know made her like that but to your point of like these people being in the real world there's always like you're, you you kind of have a person in your again, like we said, an acquaintance or a friend, someone in your friend group that has some mannerisms and like, huh, they do that. They're kind of like that sometimes. And so, and especially Gina, Gina's Gina's uh, characteristics and and mannerisms are a little bit more common, I would say, than that of yeah. Barney's. Oh yeah. So yeah, I would I would say that too. That's interesting. That's an interesting take on Gina. See, like, I think the the cool thing for me about Brooklyn Nine Nine is because every character does have their own time to shine, mm-hmm. and it's just they've given her her moments. 
Right. But yeah, I don't, it never really felt like they, well, you know what I felt? I felt like they made her meaner in the earlier seasons and very complacent and didn't really care. But then towards, or in the earlier seasons and then towards the later ones, she seemed to be a little bit better. Like, especially when you saw the relationship with, like, her and Charles. Not, like, mm-hmm. when they were sleeping together, but, like, when it came to yeah. the family and when they were brother and sister and stuff. And I don't know. I, I It's weird because, yeah, Jake and Holt seem to be the main characters. Yeah. But mm-hmm. there's so much time given to all the other ones, which is why it's so good. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it seems to be relatively spread even. Even in the last season, I would say, at least, like, Scully and Hitchcock had a full episode pretty much for them. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, there's With probably been a few castle. episodes. Yeah, there's been a few episodes where like Holt hasn't been in it. Correct? Like, I don't know if he hasn't. Maybe been like in it very at all, but... few where he wasn't like in it. Oh, I'd have to. You'd have to look at that. I would so... think so. I mean, like whenever they're focusing on a specific character, like for instance, the episode where, um, the episode where Rosa was caught in that um that fight out like that shootout mm-hmm. and they were mm-hmm. they didn't actually show rosa which i thought was a great scene or a great episode mm-hmm. and it was all about jake being there for the team yeah even though he was worried for his friend yeah. and holt was in it for sure but only when he was stopping jake from doing stuff yeah. the majority of it was jake being frustrated at it and then conversely amy trying to fix the bathroom mm-hmm. yeah you know and that one was focused on both of them. They were mine, and then everyone else actually acted as a minor character. But it was yeah. so necessary to their growth. And I think what they've done a really good job of in Brooklyn Nine Nine is like Jake's growth throughout the entire season has mm-hmm. been seamless. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you watch how he acts in the the in the latest season, not the one that came out now, but like the previous season, and you're like, that is what Jacob would say. But then you look at season one, you're like, wait a minute, how the hell did he get to be that kind of the adult version of Jake, you know, mm-hmm. where he's consoling Holt and he's understanding what needs to be done and all that. Like, it's it's really cool. But I think it's because they've made all the other characters also important enough to matter in his life. Yeah, that's true. Uh, just some quick f- uh, info here. I'm just on IMDb and uh, you have so Jake Peralta, Rosa, Terry, Amy. Charles and Holt all have been in 144 episodes. So basically all of them. That's yeah. unreal. And Hitchcock and Scully, 143. Oh, and Gina, one. 117. Well, the last season. Well, because she was gone out. for the last season. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which, and she left altogether, though. Uh, now I think. He... Like, they only brought her back for a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think she does part time, just showing up just for the sake of the story and continuity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the reason is like she sent out a on her Instagram a while ago. She put out a post, or she copied in a post that Emmy Russum did for when she left Shameless. And like, yeah. I don't know, for me, like I love love Shameless, and she was so oh. good in it. I wish there was more of her towards the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like they kind of rushed her character a bit but yeah um but now i don't know how the show's going to be without her honestly like i don't think i don't think the show can go on without her that's that's Uh, how that's how she is for me what i know i think it's it's not done but it's no no no, the show's not done yeah she left though yeah she did and i think there's i don't know if there's been a season already without her yet that's aired i don't think so either so i think that's still coming out yet right and then Chelsea Peretti sent out and put it on her Instagram, like the same thing that Emmy Russum did, where she's like saying she's super thankful, but I, like mm-hmm. it's my time to go. I've been doing this for so long and everything like that. And then essentially she's like, yeah, this is what I'm doing for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Like I'm, I'm moving on. I'm mm-hmm. kind of going on with my life. I, she has kids, you know, mm-hmm. and that I think she has one kid or she has two kids. I think she maybe only has one. Oh, but, you know. Idea. After a while, when you look at a commitment of what a lot of these actors have to do, it's pretty interesting. And like, eventually, they got to be like, "Yeah, I got to go." Well, that's how a lot of shows go. Like, I know in Walking Dead, a majority of their season one, like day one cast left. Like Andrew Lincoln, the main fucking character of the show, walked away <laughs> after like 
nine seasons one because the fucking creators kept killing off every crucial character to the final story and b he just wasn't having fun anymore so he left but sometimes yeah, but- like it's good for growth like for you don't want to be typecast like you know how josh radner was for the rest of his life he's gonna be known as ted mosby mm-hmm. yeah. neil patrick harris it- at least is like somewhat big enough to do other roles and people won't like i'll always think of him as barney stinson but i can see him in other roles and be like yeah that's just you know patrick harris doing his thing it's hard though because you haven't seen him in anything super substantial because once uh harold and kumar go to white castle came out that's when he got like the thing for barney stinson right Uh and now since how i met your mother haven't really seen him in much like you see him hosting some stuff you see him still doing entertainment he's in minor shows like he's in that one yeah unfortunate a series of unfortunate events like he's not a big star yeah but like he's a yeah stuff it's a netflix series like he's still yeah. working but it had yeah and even a lot of these guys won't hit those heights i think even um uh jason siegel you know mm-hmm. no one's really heard much about him for a while he did the muppets movie recently which he like put together i think he directed it too mm-hmm. which was awesome but i think he also stepped away from the limelight and now it's hard for him to get back in yeah. yeah, he did Forgetting um, Sarah Marshall, which was pretty good. That was funny. And I love you, man. People keep forgetting I oh, love yeah. you, man. I, I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of both of those movies. And I think they handled, uh, like, bromance so well in I Love You, Man. Yeah. Like, it, it, it was just two guys super close that are that just get each other and what a friendship like that means, mm-hmm. you know. And... um. Yeah, I actually went with my buddy Nyland to go see it, and it was awesome. Like it was. Do like, you guys hold hands? You know what? I thought we you know, we almost did. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we almost did. There was a moment there where, like, oh man, yes, mm-hmm. yes, hugs. I mean, I, I never think, yeah. show it up at his wedding to like bust it. I was like, because I was invited to it, but you know. Hmm. Out of the yeah. How May Your Mother cast, uh, I would say Kobe Smallwood is probably doing pretty good for herself. She has her own show. Uh, yeah, obviously Marvel being under her belt is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, she's she's doing pretty good. That, I haven't seen that Stump Town. Have you guys caught an episode of it? Didn't it Not get yet. canceled? Uh, I did it? Maybe I'm thinking about the girl from Walking Dead, but I'm pretty sure Kobe. Let me search this Kobe Smolder show. I don't. There know. was also Friends from College that she was in. That's yeah. what probably got canceled. I liked. I actually really liked that show. I think I saw the first couple Stump Town, right? Yeah, Stump Town. Yeah, it's just canceled. Oh, what? Uh, Awkward. Uh, maybe. That's too bad. I mean, think about it, though. Guys, let's yeah. let's really think about it. Think about how many shows are actually pitched, how many actually go up, and then how many get canceled. Like, well, I swear, after, after The Office and before Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I think there was like seven or eight shows that went to the first season and got canceled mm-hmm. midway through the first season. Did New Girl like, get canceled, by the way? Like not to like cut that off, but like I hope not. I really that was like one that you facilely got us all to watch, and I I don't know why. Did you see that video I sent Vass on Instagram of Family Guy? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I did. It was <laughs> like they were sitting in the bar, and Joe's like, "So you guys see New Girl yet?" Oh and yeah, that one. Like yeah, ten thanks. seconds. <laughs> Glenn, I guess I'm like Schmidt. Staring. Yeah, that was good. New Girl was good though. Like mm-hmm. it, 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 I hope it's still on, but it, it, like those first. I would say the first three seasons for sure were just like gold, like so good. I make fun, but it actually was a pretty. It was pretty entertaining. It was pretty funny to watch. Yeah. Oh, and oh yeah, Jack Johnson li- is in that one too. Jake Johnson, sorry, yes. Jake Johnson. Yeah, and you know what I liked? I liked how so Schmidt was kind of like the Barney Stinson character, but he mm-hmm. wasn't. He was like the good version of him, like the realistic version. Like oh, Schmidt yeah. could exist anywhere. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But also, this is and this is the thing where I went back and I know I brought it up already, but it's Ted's rec like this is Ted's recollection of what happened. So, you know, if you're looking at it from that perspective, a lot of the stuff is going to be both romanticized and it's going to be over the top and it's going to not necessarily be how it was. And so if let's say I had a bad experience with somebody, it, the story of them through through my eyes is going to be either a positive or negative extreme version of what happened. Yeah. You well, know? a lot of people like mentioned that Ted is obvious. Like I know Bar- uh, not Barney, Neil Patrick Harris didn't confirm a fa- fan theory, but he said it's very likely that Ted, like, as you mentioned, Ted was exaggerating Barney on the stories or he was exact, mm-hmm. like he exact. I don't know. A lot of the stories doesn't make sense. 
as how he'll hide the fact that he smoked weed too from his kids, but also talk about how many chicks he has banged, which is just like you'd want to hear your dad telling you that information. It just seems weird. Yeah, there's definitely some stuff there that was like this wouldn't happen. You wouldn't mm-hmm. tell your kids that at all. But but anyways, that's what I have for this week. I really like I've had it on the list, like I said, for like six or seven weeks. I think this is week number six. Or was that last week? Who cares? I think last week was five, but time last is meaningless. Five. Yeah, time is still meaningless. Time I hope meeting. everyone's safe, though. Um, that's the big thing. And our province finally rolled out like a an opening plan. So mm-hmm. eventually we can play that Portals theme mm-hmm. um, and, then, and step outside. Yep. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Gentlemen? That's it for me. Yeah, me too. Sweet. Uh, oh, one last thing. Parks and Recreation is coming back for a one episode special. So for oh. all you Parks and Recs fans, since we've already talked about Brooklyn Nine-Nine, we might as well talk about Parks and Rec a little bit too. So it's not a new season. It's not all of that, that. They're raising money for um, relief, uh, some type of a relief. But uh, it's not like a whole season coming back. But it's still pretty sweet because that was also a very, very good show. And Jerry Seinfeld's 23 Hours to Kill is coming out May 5th. So for all you Jerry Seinfeld fans like myself, it is coming out. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for another week of the F Word. I've been trying to work on a review, but it's been taking me eight tries and five tech fail attempts. So mm-hmm. that's not great. But uh, what are you going to do? You just got to work with what you got to work with. Um, you can find me on Twitter at the F Words G. You can email us at the F Word Podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following the f word on instagram and facebook the lazy canadian on instagram and until next time i'm g it's been your boy t-dog wow it's fast wouldn't you be a dog tony gangsta and we're out okay hold on don't